Hiya, I'm Jasper, and welcome to your video review for Spider-Man 2. So, as always, I'm going to give you the good, the bad, and the furry. To start off the furry... <sighs> yeah, now there isn't any. Moving on to the good and the bad. So, this movie stars Tobey Maguire again, Kirsten Dunst again, throws in Alfred Molino as uh, Dr. Otto Octavius, and James Franco, along with... And I didn't mention him last time because I wanted you to just watch that, but Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man 1 both had J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson. And let me tell you, J. Jonah Jameson and J.K. Simmons are just, like, they are a match made in heaven. They are so perfect. Like, you have never met a better actor for a better spot than that. He is so good that they brought him back as J. Jonah Jameson in the MCU. Like, that's how good... He is at B, J. Jonah Jameson. So, props to J.K. Simmons. Uh, also, do you want to point out that I like that in the first one, they made sure to establish that, like, he's not a good guy, but he's not a bad guy. <laughs> because when the Green Goblin, you know, explosives his way in, it's like, I want the photographer of Spider-Man. And he's like, I don't know. He signs it in the other barrel. Like, yeah. <laughs> he does a whole bunch of asshole things, and he is an asshole. But he's, he's, not, he's not a bad guy. You know what I'm saying? He's not the bad guy. If you get... You know what I mean. You know what I mean. Okay. Moving on. Um, I love the character of Doc Ock. I think that they chose the perfect person for him for this iteration of him. Don't get me wrong. I love the uh, Spider-Verse version of Doc Ock as well. But um, this one, he is just so fantastic. He has such a gravity to him. He's... Like, when he says, you know, the power of the sun in the palm of my hands. Like... So many people could deliver that line, and you're just going to be like, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> like, that's terrible. But he just, he does it, and it's so good. And he just does such a good job of, you know, playing the character before and after the accident. And he's just, he's just fantastic in it. <laughs> um, I still love Aunt May. I think she does. She still has that perfect balance of strength, vulnerability, and, like, sternness with love. Like, she's just fantastic. Everybody should have her as an Aunt May. Um... Again, I still like the MCU version of Aunt May, but this version, I super like. There's there's other versions. I'm just saying I like this one, okay? I'm not saying I don't like the other ones. I like pancakes and waffles. Okay. Um, so, the CGI, I think, with this one, it doesn't hold up as well as the first one, because I think with the first one, they were a bit more cautious. Sort of like how in The Matrix, they were a bit more cautious with the CGI than they were in The Matrix Reloaded when they had, like, the rubber Neo fight. Or, I'm sorry, the fight against the 100 Smiths, but that's what I call it, the rubber Neo fight. Uh, so with this one, there was a little bit of that because there was, I think, a few too many times where we see Doc Ock and especially the face or the hair, they just don't quite get right to match Alfred Molino's. So it's just not quite there. It's a bit of an uncanny valley. And... You know, the train sequence, there's, it's cool, but there is just a bit too many times where, you know, they do the close-up of the actual actor, and then they do the far, far, farther away shot, and it's like, oh, and there's, there's CGI going on. So, that being said, it overall didn't bother me, but that might be because I watched these when I was little, and I enjoyed them, and then I've enjoyed all the Spider-Man movies, and... So, both my nostalgia and general love of all things Spider-Man may be tinting my view of the overall quality of this film, but based on the box office returns and that they made a third one, and that they brought back Doc Ock, this version, to the MCU, spoilers for Far Away, anyhow, um, the fact that they did that, I think, speaks to how good of a film this is. What I will say, though, is... My problem with the first one was a bit of that love triangle. This one, um, I feel a little bad for Harry because he's just, like, thinking all these things about his, you know, best friend and his nemesis Spider-Man and whatnot. But, bro, like, Spider-Man could have written you a letter and been like, hey, man, this is what happened. But instead, it's sort of like, it reminds me of uh, the, uh, the Dark Knight Returns, where, you know, um, uh, whatever the chick's name is, chose the Two-Face guy before he was Two-Face. Um, and, like, that was her choice. And 
the butler Alfred decided not to tell Bruce, and so Bruce was like pining over her and like just just festering, festering in his little cocoon of sadness for like decades about this thing. And that is what Spider-Man is doing. Sorry, not Spider-Man. That is what James Franco's character is doing, and Spider-Man is the is the Alfred in this situation. Like, you, Alfred should have told Batman way sooner than like, hey bro, she chose somebody else. And Spider-Man should have been like, hey man, your fucking dad was the Green Goblin, and he killed himself in the fight against me, the fight against good. Like, I didn't do the fucking killing blow, I jumped out of the way. So I feel like that would have solved a lot of problems, and so that a little bit frustrated me, because now, current me is like, oh, this is like Smallville all over again, even though I know this, like, time frame for Smallville versus this is different. Point being, that annoys me a little bit, just in principle, but also in terms of principles, bro, Mary Jane, you, you are a bad person for agreeing to marry somebody when you're not sure. If you agree to marry someone, you are sure. Like, don't be making out with other people. <laughs> that's not how that works, bro. <laughs> like, that's not, that's not, that's not, no. <laughs> so just all her actions and they will, they won't, they like, it's great that her and Peter can maybe, maybe not, and her and Spider-Man can maybe, maybe not, and maybe she does, maybe she doesn't know, like, sure, I guess, but just from like a morality standpoint, if you just replace like, non-superhero characters that we all love with just random people on the street, you'd be like, girl, you're making the wrong choice and being bad to all those people. And especially, and spoiler alert-ish for the end, like, what she does at the end to that guy, like, bro, bro, you just... I, I don't understand why, like, 80s and 90s and I guess early 2000s movies think that it's just this amazing and romantic thing to, to just be like, yeah, this, this is the romantic gesture we should encourage people to do. No! No! That is not, that is not the appropriate time or actions, and you need to have all those thoughts worked out before you get to that point, bro. Ugh. Ugh. Anywho, still, overall, um, <laughs> the storyline, the pacing, the action, um, the characters, the acting within, the, and all of that, and the music, you know, this movie... And the other movie, like, they have a strong Spider-Man theme. And I feel like not enough people appreciate that. When you hear that theme, you you immediately feel Spider-Man. You're like, oh, I know that. That's a Spider-Man. That's, that's Spider-Man's theme. Like, it may not be Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Like, it may not be that theme, but it is a theme that you associate with Spider-Man and that is memorable and has that impact. So, yeah. Um, but all, all the other things I said, like... Overall, very good movie. Two thumbs up. One other thing before we go. The first one and the second one, uh, both on my rewatch, I noticed had really, really good songs over the basically entirety of the credits, not just like the initial bits. So maybe that was before the pre-Oscar rule that your credit song had to have taken place over like whatever the scene is. So yeah, stick around for the credits. Those The music is, is awesome in the credits for both of those. Um, but that's all I have for this one. Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you at the next one. Bye.